Hi, I'm Jen. Welcome back. I make videos about my adventures as a 50-something silver and solo traveler, and today's video is about the benefits of traveling solo. Before I begin, I want to clarify something. I mean, I can see people will say, if you have to travel alone, you may as well make the best of it. Well, I agree with the cheery disposition. Um, what I'm talking about are benefits value added that you can only get by traveling solo and not with a partner or a group. For some of us, traveling solo isn't trying to make the best of an unfortunate situation. It's an intentional choice. Like, I can go and get a tan at a resort with a partner or in a group or as a solo person. The tan is the tan. The benefit is the same, whether I'm by myself or with a group. That's not a benefit of solo travel. This video is about benefits you can only get when you travel solo. It's easier to meet new people. When you're traveling with a group or with family, you tend to stick together and you tend to only talk with one another. You're less likely to wander off on your own. One of the best benefits of solo travel is that you interact with a lot more people than you normally would. Travelers in general are usually keen to strike up a conversation with another traveler, and even if the idea of chatting with someone you don't know sets your stomach in knots, it's easier than it sounds. I remember getting off the train in Bangkok after a 13-hour bus and rail journey from Phuket, and within a minute of walking down that platform towards the station with somewhat of a plan in mind to find a guest house that had been recommended by another traveler in Phuket, I heard, hey Canada, shouted from behind me. I had a Canadian flag on my backpack, as most Canadians and a whole bunch of Americans did at that time. And I turned around on the platform to see Karen and Monica from Germany strolling towards me with big grins on their faces. We'd never met. They just saw the flag, they saw that I was alone, and they shouted out to me. They knew the guest house I had been headed to, but knew a better one. So I headed out with them and we spent two days exploring Bangkok before heading our separate ways. We all exchanged information, but I don't think I ever heard from them again. And it was well before Facebook. So, I mean, shout out Karen and Monica. I hope that you two had a blast in Chiang Mai. More recently, I spent a lovely hour sitting in a restaurant, drinking a beer with a woman from Australia, Gail, who I just happened to meet in a lineup at a restaurant on the thoroughfare to Mont Saint-Michel. We were both tired and waiting to meet up with our respective tour groups after having spent the afternoon exploring the monastery and abbey and had lined up outside this restaurant to grab a seat and a drink. She was standing beside me and the restaurant was packed and the line was moving slowly, so I turned and asked if she'd like to share a table with me when we got to the front. I explained my situation and she laughed and said, same, so we did. What a super conversation I had with a retired patent attorney who was pondering whether or not to begin her doctorate in art history. Cheers, Gail. Thanks for the beer. And if I ever get to Sydney, I will look you up and repay the favor. Honestly, traveling alone brings out this introvert's more sociable side. I don't sit back and rely on my extrovert friends, of which I have quite a few, to do the heavy lifting on the social front. And I've always had a great experience initiating a conversation and chatting with my fellow travelers. Your language skills will improve. What better way to learn a new language than to throw yourself in headfirst? When you're a solo traveler, your language learning amps up and has one big benefit to traveling alone in a foreign country. When traveling in a group, there isn't much of a necessity to try and learn the local language because you can just chat amongst yourselves and you're more likely to rely on them for help with translating. When you're alone, on the other hand, you're forced to constantly try and communicate with people who don't speak your language. Over time, you start picking up helpful words and phrases that work to help you get your message across. If you're in one place for long enough, you might even start stringing together sentences. Hey, if you made it this far, please consider subscribing to the channel, giving me a thumbs up. It helped me out a lot. It's important to leave your comfort zone now and again. If you're traveling in a group and you come up against an obstacle, you're more likely to troubleshoot together. 
Talking things over with someone else usually provides a nice, comfortable consensus solution. But as a solo traveler, being on your own means you have to solve issues by yourself. Hiccups are the rule, not the exception when traveling, and learning to socialize by yourself and problem solve on your own, even eating out solo, are all part of the challenge and will probably take you out of your comfort zone. This is a good thing. Pushing your comfort boundaries is a form of personal growth and you'll build self-esteem and self-confidence that you wouldn't accomplish in a group or if you just stayed home. With solo travel, you can be as selfish as you want. Building on that whole breaking out of your comfort zone thing, what about putting yourself in the driver's seat full-time? Maybe for the first time. One of the greatest benefits of solo travel is autonomy. Being the boss while traveling means you can do exactly what you want, anytime you want. When you're traveling as part of a group, it's a negotiation. Everyone's opinions have to be heard, which can often lead to compromise. It's normal that people won't want to do the same thing as you, or they want to do things at different times. But when you travel solo, want to take a sunrise tour? How about a street stall for dinner? Lay in bed reading all day? Whatever you feel like, every choice is yours. Get used to relying on your own instincts and making choices based on what's important to you. Traveling solo can be cost effective. Traveling with kids or as a group can be more expensive than traveling solo. Holidays for single people can be cost effective if you are the one deciding the budget and how you spend it. As the mistress of your own destiny, you decide the things you want to treat yourself to and where you can pull back and go shoestring. It's your decision. You can choose to have a day where you self-explore or stay local to save money for something more expensive that you really want to do later on. Make your trip your own by budgeting for you and only you. You can also rest without feeling guilty. Sometimes when you're in a group, the pressure to keep pushing on can be intense. When traveling solo, you can be guilt-free about skipping a tour or even just sleeping in and reading as much as you like. I've done this. After a whirlwind week of tours filling every day, I finally got to Edinburgh and my hotel had a beautiful view of the castle and it was on my to-do list to walk over there. Yes, I was even close enough to walk to the castle gates and explore along the Golden Mile and I didn't. I flopped into bed and stayed there. So long, Edinburgh Castle. See you next time. I just couldn't do it. I was too tired. But that was my choice. It was up to me. There was only me. Solo travel just might make you happier in the long term. It's science. Research suggests that traveling and spending time alone has the potential to increase your well-being. Escaping normal life, getting out of your routine, has been shown to reduce stress and depression and bump up your overall happiness. Let's face it, solo travel does things for you that group travel just can't touch. Once you experience and start to appreciate your own company and the reflection and introspection that allows, you'll start making solo travel a priority in your life.